Hey everyone. Um, so if this is the first time you're uh, opening up Inspector, you'll need to open up the uh, the Inspector README, and in there there's a quick start section, and you'll need the account name and password to to launch Inspector because um, we have it set to reset your password when you open. So the default password that you enter with is INSP8 and the account name is Inspector Pro. When you sign in, it'll ask you to change your password. And once you do that, it'll log you in. And next step is um, you'll need an activation code either for a trial or for your purchase. And that's uh, what's gonna get emailed to you. And this license code is registered uh, to beeswax. And so when you activate it, you'll see at the bottom when your renewal date is and who it's registered to and the, and the type of license. The best way to use it is actually to have it hosted on a server and, uh, and to then um, use the add-on that comes with Inspector to add the functionality so that um, when you're working with your files, the XML is generated directly on a server and then is, is sent a message to Inspector to process it. And that's what we'll cover next. Okay, so you're looking at a, at a copy of Inspector Pro that's hosted on one of our beeswax servers. And uh, the very first thing you'll wanna do to start analyzing uh, your solutions is you want to create a solution. So let's step through um, creating a solution here. You'll enter um, the name of the solution. Um, and uh, in this case, I'm going to use the, the meetings file. And so when you create it, you'll get um, a solution ID. And that's this number on the, on the left here. And we'll we'll look at that number. That's going to be an important number to remember when you uh, when you work with the add-on. So Inspector Eight has, actually has a number of different ways that you can send the XML um, to to Inspector, especially when it's hosted on server or or locally. Um, and those ways are either directly from clicking this arrow button here. There's a manually upload option. There's by window names, and then there's the integration, the API integration that comes with the add-on that comes with Inspector. So um, let's look at these first two options. And so first off, I'm gonna create a new file, uh, meetings. I'm gonna just save it um, here. And I'll have a meetings file, and I have um, Inspector Pro. So one thing I could do, this meetings file is local, so I could um, I could go to the tools menu. And by the way, if you don't have the tools menu, you can go to settings and um, you check this checkbox here, use advanced tools, and then restart FileMaker, and you'll have this menu as well over here. So in the tools menu, um, in this version of Inspector 8, we have switched from using um, the DDR to using save a copy as XML. So you'll choose that option and uh, I'll put a folder in here called XML. And it saves, it's, if the file is local, it saves it out very quickly. If it's on the server, it's also very quick. However, if you've got a hosted file, you definitely do not want to generate the XML from your computer over the network because that part is very slow. So now that you have the XML uh, generated, you could go to here and you could say, I want to manually upload it and you can put a comment um, for the first, um, for the first analysis, you, we usually call it, call it a baseline. This is, you can set any one of these methods as the default method. So this is the baseline, I run it and it's going to ask me for that location of that XML. It could be the location of that XML or multiple XML files that are all part of, uh, that make up your solution. And so I select it, it sends it to the server, it processes it and, um, and it's done. All right, so that's one method. 
the other method, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clear this. I'm going to reset it. Okay, so now all the data is going to be gone. So now I, I don't have any data. I'm going to do the same thing, except this time I'm going to do use the option to say window names. And all you need to do here is type in the, uh, the names of the windows for which you want to generate save as XML for. And you must have all, all these files open with full access for this to work. So I'll type in meetings. Again, I'll put in, um, put in a comment, run, and what it'll do is it'll generate the XML and send it to the server and process it. So those two methods are great if your file is local. If your file is hosted, um, let me get rid of this data again here. Let's still reset it. Um, if your file is hosted, uh, you'll want to use the add-on. So I'm going to pretend this file is hosted. It's not hosted right now, but I'm going to go ahead and add the add-on. So here, this one. And um, let's see here. I'm going to just make this a little bit taller. I'm going to drag it onto the layout. And by adding the add-on, it added uh, a table occurrence. It added... Um, uh, some scripts, some some scripts for the add-on, or over here, and um, and so these scripts work in conjunction with uh, this add-on, and then it added a layout. So if you click the button, now this is where that number is important to enter. So this is uh, five six five here. I'll enter five six five. Yeah, again, you can put in a comment here if you wish. The settings. Um, so this this is hosted on the, on one of our beeswax servers. So you'd enter the uh, the host name of the server it's hosted on, and then um, this is the name of the file uh, that uh, Inspector is is named. So you can rename Inspector when you host it, and that's the name that you'll enter over here. And then um, and then this is the um, Inspector Pro INSP O. That's the uh, OData account password. And so what you'll need to do to, because by default it's set up to work, but it already has a password on it. And, um, and so for, for you to um, have more peace of mind, you can actually reset this password and there's instructions in the document. Uh, basically you would open up Inspector with the INSP-O account name and the password is provided in the readme. And then once you log in, you would go to the file menu and say um, change password. And then you would enter the old password and enter a new password. And the new password and confirmed password should match the password in your, um, in your add-on um, here. And so once that's done and the file is hosted, uh, then what you can do, there's a few options you can do. Again, this, is, um, this file was local. I didn't host it. So let me... Um, let me go ahead and open up a file that is hosted, and we'll take a look um, shortly at uh, firing off um, some analyses uh, from both Inspector and, and the other file. We're going to talk about the other third integration option, which is with the add-on. I have now hosted this, this inventory file on our server, and the add-on is already part of it. If I click on Process, and um, you'll see over here, I've created a solution for it. The solution ID is 554. The solution ID in the add-on is 554. These have to match so that uh, when you generate the XML, it knows which one of these solutions and inspector does that XML belong to. And so, um, so now I can, uh, it's all set up and ready. All I need to do is uh, just put in uh, uh, a name uh, description and hit return and um, it'll run on server. So it's running on server. It's importing. It's completed basically. Uh, so uh, what it just did was um, it ran a, a PSOS script that generated the XML. It called Inspector Pro to tell where that XML was. It processed it and um, 
And so that's a, that's a very small file, but um, that only took like three seconds. And, uh, and that's it. Now, there's a couple of things to note here. And that is if I make a change, let's say, um, let's say I add a button to this layout. And this button has this, uh, let's say this gear icon, make it a little bit smaller. Uh, make the button a bit bigger. Okay. Um, and put this button over here. And now I want to, I want to make, uh, I want to document that change. Let's say I could either click the process button again and type in, you know, added button to the layout, etc. and document and run it or hit return. It'll run it. And so now, um, that'll get picked up and then, and then you'll see here two, two items added, three items modified. Um, <clears throat> and um, so that's one way. The other way really quickly is if, again, if I make a change here and I remove the button, instead of having to type a message and all that, what I could simply do is hold the option key down and it will run it without uh, prompting me for a message. And, um, and that picked up uh, one modification and one deletion. And we'll talk about those details um, uh, shortly. However, there's yet another way, and that is um, if you if you go to the arrow button, you can have this integration method, um, which means that this and this copy of Inspector will call the script that was installed from the add-on via FMP URL. So it's it 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 cop it runs it from Inspector Pro to the inventory file, telling it to run the script to generate the XML, which then runs on server. So in, in a way I can trigger that same process right from here. So for example, let me, let me do the same thing again. Let me just undo that. So the button comes back and now I can go to here and I click this and um, I'll, say, I'll set this as my default. From now on, this will be the default and I'll say added a button. Next, we'll talk about uh, adding users to Inspector so that multiple users can either uh, be part of your solution and review it and, and uh, work with that solution as a team. Or you can enable users to create their own solutions and, and then invite other members to, to be part of that. Um, the, the main area you'll do that is in the, on the users section. And uh, so you'll add a new user. You'll put in their name, their email, their account name. If you have, if you use, if you use Slack, you can put in their Slack member ID. Um, we don't have this feature enabled just yet, where we send notifications to a, a, a particular um, Slack member. But uh, in the, that's something we're working on in the future. And then uh, there's two options. There's a there's a user and there's an admin. So the admin is able to do everything. They're able to see all the solutions. They're able to add, delete, reset solutions, etc. So they basically they can do everything. Um, if you create a user, you'll have the additional option for a user to allow that user to create and manage their own solutions, which means that they can create a solution. They can edit that solution, reset that solution, and they'll even delete that solution. However, if you just add a user without this option, what that will do is they'll add the users to the list of people here. And then when you add that person to your solution, they are able to see that solution and, um, and participate in that solution, but they're not able to uh, delete that solution or reset that solution. And they would only be able to see the solutions that they're members of. So in this case, this inventory file, if I click on the, uh, the zero members, because there's zero members right now, I can select um, one of the users in this list, which is okay. So I'll select, um, let's say, Brendan, and I'll 
define Brendan as a developer. I'll add Brendan and then I'll select myself and I'll make myself the architect and I'll add um, Mercuria and I'll make him the uh, UX designer. So now we have these three people um, that are able to participate on this solution here. And um, yeah, so then um, that's how you add uh, users uh, to Inspector and that's how you associate users to a solution. All right, so next we'll look at navigation. And there's uh, navigation, there's, uh, there's two icons here. One is the, the settings for the editing of the solution, etc. But there's another icon here. This brings up, um, this will bring up the dashboard for um, this solution, which is called inventory. And on this main dashboard, you'll see um, total number of items on the far right, and then the percentage of unreferenced code that's in each of these areas. So like, for example, um, this, this example here, there's 211 styles and all of them are unreferenced or um, there's uh, one script that's unreferenced out of seven scripts. So that's that. If I go and drill into um, the scripts area, um, I can also navigate back to the dashboard um, over here or navigate back to the script area that way, or I can navigate uh, using some of these um, pop-up um, icons uh, at the top in the navigation bar. So I could go look at all the fields if I wanted to. I could also go uh, navigate back to scripts. This time I can go look at all seven scripts, or I could go look at only the one script that's marked as unreferenced. So that's a script that's in the in, um, that's that was added as the integration script. It's marked as unreferenced. I can show all those records in the scripts. And um, yeah, so that's basically uh, uh, navigation. I can also go back to where I was and um, navigate back and forward or use the navigation that is available at the top here. Uh, there's, in some cases, there are uh, sub uh, popovers like this that you can navigate with, or you can just, um, some cases there isn't a, a popover necessarily, and it'll take, take you directly to the item. So, um, yeah, so lots to explore in navigation, but it's pretty straightforward and simple. So. Next, we'll take a look at um, different options to search. And the first one is going to be uh, using uh, a global search, which, uh, which is possible up here, which we had in Inspector 7. And so you can have it focus on searching across schema, across calculations, so these are enabled, and you can search across history. Um, history is uh, interesting because you can search um, even for deleted items in, in when you search for history. Uh, we'll cover that in a, in a little bit later, but um, basically let's say you searched for, and this is an inspector, let's say um, reset, the word reset, and hit return. And these are all the places where it finds the word reset. Um, could be a uh, like, for example, here's in a field name. It could be in a comment, field comment, or uh, in other places. But this did, did a search in those areas, and um, and you can expand it out if you find um, find the first 10 items and then expand it expand it out to uh, to show all the items. So, uh, so that's um, a global search for uh, that's possible either in calculations. So you can search for a variable across all calculations, um, a single word. And again, we'll cover the history global search in a little bit. But what I'd like to talk about right now is Logicator search, which uh, is a product that Mark Scott built 
And uh, it's an excellent add-on that you can add into your solutions and it's available on the Beeswax website. But basically it takes very little, little, very little time to integrate and it gives you a familiar interface. Um, so for example, um, you can, it'll install this card window and it'll scrape your layout to tell you what fields I can search on on this layout and uh, some different options that you can search by. So for example, I'm looking for an account um, that starts with LUC um, that, that found Luciano. Um, I can show all again. And if I hold the control key down and I hit find again, it remembers my last search. So, um, so then I can, I can search for that or, or add some other criteria to search on. If I click on it again, that starts a new search. What's nice about this version is um, as soon as you bring it up, you can just type the, what your search criteria is, hit return, and you're looking at results. Uh, so we made some, a little bit um, ease of use enhancements there, um, which, um, which are helpful. <clears throat> Next, let's look at what uh, is possible with AI. Um, we stepping into a new world here and we added some AI capabilities to Inspector in this release. The first capability is we added a way to, um, to basically summarize scripts. So for example, you'll select a script and if you've um, asked it to, um, if you entered the information as part of your solution to um, associate what language uh, model you're, what um, language provider you're using or what model you're using and your API key. It's set up to work with a um, chat GPT. Um, so, but um, in the future we'll, we'll have it more open-ended uh, so that you can use uh, any provider. Uh, right now, so what it's done is it's generated summaries of the scripts. So like, for example, there's a short summary, a little bit longer summary, and, um, and so for, for example, this script uh, is designed to fully reset a database to a demo state. It includes steps as, such as renaming files, deleting scratch layouts, uh, changing the ID field, removing unwanted accounts, et cetera, et cetera. So if I look, if I copy, actually, if I go look at the script itself, um, you'll see the information uh, in here as to what it's doing. And, um, and so basically it's summarizing that information uh, as part of its analysis. And what we're using the summary for is we're using, using the summary for yet another AI capability. And that is um, we're able to search semantically on data. So for example, let's say I wanted to find all scripts that reset um, data. I could, hit, um, I could enter that criteria and set a number of total records that I want find. And, um, and it finds all the scripts based on meaning uh, and based on the embeddings uh, of, of the summary. So what, it, what it's doing really is it's generating uh, an embedding based on this summary. And then when you're searching um, using the search, it uh, matches the meaning that you have um, uh, typed in here versus the meaning that's in the, the summary and tries to find um, a match that is of uh, the highest uh, possible ranking. And uh, you can specify a total number of records and it will try and get as close to, um, to this number as possible. Yeah, and so we're looking to add more capabilities in the future for AI, but this is, um, this is a, a start. So with AI, a couple of interesting use cases are, one, you've inherited a solution that you haven't worked on and you, it has 500 some odd scripts and all the scripts are very long and you don't understand it. AI can can lend a helping hand by generating a summary of the script, and thus um, instead of reading, you know, um, you know, 122 lines of scripts, what you could do is just read the the short summary or the longer summary, um, 
and so gives you a heads up as to what the script is doing rather than to have to pour over the um, the actual code itself. Uh, what's what I found interesting is when you add sections or comments above uh, a, a set of uh, a set of uh, a, a code, a block, a block of script steps, etc. What I find interesting is it uses sometimes those comments as uh, bullets or points to make that like this next section does this or et cetera. So it's very interesting how it's able to, to summarize the script. And then another use case might be you haven't looked at your solution in a year or two, and it's a good way to get re-familiarized with um, the logic in your scripts. But the important point is that the semantic search capability that this enables is the ability to search um, with meaning um, instead of uh, with precision. So I'm not looking for a specific um, field name or something like that. And, and especially for scripts, your, um, your, your, your scripts have um, a kind of defined intent, let's say, by uh, what the summary provides. And what AI enables is the ability to search with what that meaning is that the script is doing. So this enables a whole new paradigm that we've never really had before. And this is just the beginning. So when you're looking at the uh, inspector dashboard, um, you'll see um, these gray bars here. So for example, in the, um, in the inventory solution, there's a, there's a number of layouts that got added, these three layouts here that actually are not referenced anywhere. So if we can actually go back to the dashboard and you'll see them here, these three layouts, if I click on them, these three layouts have no references of, of, of them. So uh, Brendan, who's my colleague, he's actually logged in and he's gonna make changes. And he's also looking at Inspector and seeing that those three layouts are not referenced anywhere. So he's gonna go ahead and delete those three layouts and then run Inspector. And, um, and we'll see this update um, almost real time here. Once he's run it, this number is gonna change. And we'll see that number got changed just now. So now those three layouts got removed. In a sense, uh, this is helping you to refactor your code and, and trim it down to only what you need. And if we look here, there's a lot of items that got deleted. That's because there was a lot of objects on each of those layouts that also got um, deleted. I'm going to hand it over to Brendan, and he's going to show you some other things that he's um, made changes to. Here's an example of some changes that um, Inspector Pro will track. Uh, so let's say I'm on this layout, and for example, I don't like the position of this invent inventory button. I might move this down a little bit. Um, I might create uh, create a new field on the layout. Um, so let me, uh, whoops, copy paste. Uh, let's say this is going to be last order. Uh, and then let's say I take a look at a script and I decide, hmm, I want to change the script. So I'm going to go into this calculation. I might adjust my calculation in some way. Let's say I want a uh, current host timestamp instead of current timestamp. And let's say that's good. OK, save that change. Go back to my layout. Uh, save my change here. OK, I'm happy with that. So now I'm just going to hold the Option key, click the Process button. So we'll see here it uh, went pretty quickly. Um, I can take a look at the history of changes. Uh, so you can see there's quite a few things that changed here. So um, one of the cool things you can do is take a look at the calculation changes. So for example, this is right here. Um, I can uh, choose to show the diff in the calculation so I can see exactly what changed, which is pretty cool. Um, I can also take a look at some other details about the layouts that changed. So you know, here's some metadata about the objects in the layout. Um, here's some changes to actual layout objects. So we can see this one move position. Um, as a result of adjusting a layout object in a layout part, we'll see that kind of the parts had changes. In this case, the metadata is just saying that the last person to edit the, the part was me. Um, 
So Inspector Pro kind of tracks all of these metadata changes. Um, yeah, and this is a general change to the script where I edited the script step. So yeah, so Inspector Pro will keep track of all of that information. All right, so um, I downloaded a copy of Starting Point from uh, Richard Carlton's website and uh, just to play around with it, test it out. And uh, here's, um, here's the dashboard. Again, with uh, references and dependencies, Inspector will track both of these, but the more critical one is uh, references where, where this item is being used. And so you want to be careful not to delete something where it's being used. And, and, and FileMaker has gotten better over the years if you try to delete, let's say, a field that's used in a calculation in the same file. It won't let you do that. Uh, it'll tell you that it can't delete it. Um, so it'll give you some warnings, but in some cases it doesn't give you warnings. So you can just delete a custom function. And even though it's used in a lot of places, it won't warn you that it's being used. You just delete it without understanding. So uh, it's a good idea to check with a tool uh, like Inspector. And so for example, there's 894 scripts in this, um, in this file. And there's 27 references of this, uh, of this script here. So if I click on the reference button, um, this one here uh, tells me all the places where that script is referenced. And this, in this case is uh, script triggers. And um, these are script steps that call that script, et cetera. So um, if this were zero, I could potentially delete that script. However, there could be um, perform script by name. Um, so you'd have to search uh, your script steps and see if you're using any references of, um, of indirection, any types of indirection, uh, just to get a reassurance that um, you know, you're not using indirection in this solution. So you can uh, rest assured that it's not being used. Um, a, good, a good idea is Inspector will get you like 99% of the way there, but the other 1% is really just understanding uh, the solution and understanding how it's used to make sure that you don't accidentally delete something that is in use. I'm going to show a couple of the features which we had in Inspector 7, which has been um, kind of more developed now in Inspector 8, and that is tags and notes. So here's where you manage the global list of tags, and these tags apply to every item in your solution. Um, you can choose a tag style here. I'm going to go with traffic, traffic signal muted. Um, I'm going to call this tag to deprecate. Um, and I'm going to give it the color of uh, stop and then add that. Um, so now this tag is available to me everywhere. Um, and I can just add another tag just to show you an example. Uh, let's add that. OK, once I'm happy with my tags here, close out of that. Um, and then on any item in my list, if I click on this here, I can tag it. So uh, let me tag this one to deprecate. Now I don't see the tag because I have to toggle the tag view here. Um, and that will let me see the tags that I attach to items in my system. So let's say this one, I marked as to deprecate. These two down here, I'm going to mark both of these as um, green, another tag. Uh, and this one down here as well. Okay. Uh, and let's say, let's say I'm happy with that. Um, but then I also want to take a look at my scripts here. And I've got this new script here. I also want to deprecate that. So let's just mark that as deprecated as well. Um, again, the toggle is on all of the layouts. So you have to do that up here. Um, the other cool thing about this is that I can go to the dashboard uh, in my global search, and actually, I can actually search on that tag. So I can say uh, to deprecate, uh, hit the enter key, the return key, um, and I'll see. Like I've got one field here and uh, one script here, which I've chosen to deprecate. Um, same thing with another tag. Uh, if I hit return there, I'll find the two items that I tagged. Um, uh, with the another tag, tag. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and again, this this still functions as a 
Um, it will accept native FileMaker searches, so you can do, you know, whatever you would do normally in FileMaker. So yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's still a native search, but it's also including a search across your tags. So those will also show up here. Um, yeah, and that's, that's tags. We have Slack integration uh, also in this version as we did in the previous version. Right now, it's only sending a message when an analysis um, completes. The way you set that up is uh, go to the uh, main section for editing a solution and you'll enter your webhook here and you'll notify on analysis completion, you'll wanna turn that on. Um, you can turn it off at any point in time, but what that will do is it'll show a little icon that there's a Slack integration for this solution. And when you make a change to the solution, let's say I delete this, um, this layout object and I'll go back to Inspector. Actually, let me bring up this window here so you can see it. I can run it, I'll hold the option key down, I'll run it, it kicks it off, it's running, and there it is. Um, analysis 13 for inventory just completed, uh, 2.2 seconds, and the Slack notification that shows up for it. So helping you and your team stay informed as to when things are happening. In the future, we'll be adding other additional kinds of notifications but right now, this is a notification when um, an analysis completes. So I'm going to talk about um, styles um, and um, what's possible with Inspector. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and put this, um, put this field on this layout. And that is going to be a default style. I'm going to option copy that field. I'm going to be a diff different field. And this uh, field, will mo well, I will modify it. I will save it as a style, call it or orange, and save it into the theme. So now that's a theme style. If I copy another field out and make a change to this style, this little green, I'll save it as a new style called green but I won't save it into the theme. So you can see different, different options there. And then I will do another field and I will just make changes to this field. And so now I have a default style, a theme style, what is sometimes referred to as a layout style, and then a local style. Okay, so there's four different styles here. Um, and so we're gonna save this. I'm gonna run Inspector. And I'm going to go look at the layout, that layout number four. So layout, layout number four. And I'm going to look at styles. And you'll see you have like four objects, one default, one theme, one layout, one local. If I go into that layout, and um, let me just um, let me make this part smaller. Okay, so I'm going to um, make these all theme styles. So make, basically, I'm going to make this one. I'm going to turn this one to orange and this one also to orange. So these are all going to be theme styled, and that's one default style, but man, let's make that all orange. So they're all orange. I'm going to save the changes to my theme. You don't have to save the changes to your theme, but I just did. Um, so now I am going to uh, keep these windows open so you can see them. And I'm going to run it. Sorry. Uh, let's, let's call it layout style changes. Run. Okay. So you're going to see over here these numbers disappeared, right? So I have four theme styles. Zero default style, zero layout style, zero local style. So this is a, a great way to uh, look at your solutions and see what styling information is applied to objects. And uh, another cool thing is uh, that you can actually refactor them and, and uh, save, save some processing time when, uh, when these layouts load. All right, next we're gonna cover uh, problems and um, in Inspector 8, 
they show up as warning triangles and um, there's a couple ways to get to them. So one is, um, in, again, from the dashboard, if you see a list of problems um, and you navigate to an area like I have uh, fields in this meetings file, I have 88 fields and I could click on the 88 and see all my fields. And at some point you'll see the warning pro uh, icon show up on, on, the, uh, on the fields. I can click on the warning triangle and it'll tell me the details of what that problem is. Another way that you can navigate to there is um, again, either from the dashboard or from this pop-up pop over. I can just click on the warning triangle and it narrows in right onto the, the fields with problems. And so for example, this one here has a validation for a value list that's that's missing. I wish we could click here and be taken to the actual field, but we can't at this time. So um, so here's the uh, the field, here's the validation, here's the value list that's missing. So the value list was deleted. Someone maybe didn't check it with inspector before they get rid of the value list to see if it was referenced and thus created a problem. So, um, so that's one way to quickly navigate around and see what the problem is and then, um, and then go fix it basically. But um, we did a lot of work to, um, to surface the kinds of problems uh, in a better, easier to, easier to understand um, UI. So there's, um, there's a lot of details there when you click on the warning triangle. Another thing about problems that they, sur that they, they surface right away on the, uh, not only on the, uh, on the dashboard screen that we saw here, so you have the illustrating where the, where the problems are, et cetera, right? So in this case, this value list has primary field is missing, primary table occurrence is missing, et cetera, et cetera. But right from the main Inspector Pro dashboard, you'll see a total number of problems and an emoji associated with uh, the stress level of the number of problems that you have. So you'll see right, right off at the, on the main screen if you have a number of problems um, in the solution. With Inspector 7, we used to and process the DDR. And every time we process the DDR, we would gobble up all the data. So all the fields, all the scripts, all the layout objects, et cetera. And um, over time, that would, um, that would get slower because there's more data. And so, um, you know, even a small solution might take a couple of minutes at start at the, at the beginning, but then over time, as you have maybe a hundred analyses, you'll end up uh, seeing, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever. Uh, not only that, but, the bigger deal was that the size of the inspector would just grow dramatically. So in a case of um, a small system that had, let's say, 26,000 items, 8,000 calculations, 15,000 references and dependencies, over time, that solution could grow, easily grow into millions of rows of data, and the file size could grow into the gigabytes. Um, so the big deal when we switched from DDR to XML is the structure of the XML now allows us the ability to uh, uh, zero in on only the changes that have occurred. So now what we have is um, instead of um, you know uh, gigabytes in file size, we're we're rep representing just the state of your solution. So we're one to one with what what is in your system. So the first base the first analysis is going to gobble up everything just to get the baseline. And then after that, what we're able to do is we're able to process the XML and see where the changes have occurred, find those changes, document them, and be done. So we're literally talking about um, just seconds uh, to process um, you know, various things that have been added, removed, or modified. And the benefit of that is that um, you know, uh, we're, we're keeping a very low footprint we're basically one-to-one -one with what's in your system. And so if you're actually refactoring your code and getting and it's getting smaller, it's going to have a smaller footprint in Inspector, which is great. Uh, if you're adding your code, adding new code, it's going to grow, but only, only grow as much as your code is growing in your system. So you're no longer going to see um, the file size of Inspector grow to gigabytes. Hopefully it's only megabytes, depending again, depending on the size of your systems. But this is a big, this is a really big deal for us, and uh, we're 
really excited to to step into this new paradigm of being able to um, to represent only the changes and and the reason it's also a big deal is that it keeps you current and then a state of flow so that as you're working and various team members are either updating or running the solution uh, you're getting insights um, almost immediately to see like okay uh, in a, in a previous example Brendan removed three layouts and I was able to uh, see pretty soon thereafter that those three layouts got removed. And now I, I don't have any three layouts that are unreferenced. I've actually refactored code, simplified the solution, et cetera. So uh, we're really excited to step into this world. So again, seven used to be um, taking a lot of time, 18 hours, maybe just as an estimate of like a hundred analyses on a small system down to like 10 minutes for a hundred analyses. And you could do 100 analyses in a day. You could even do more than 100. Um, as a matter of fact, you could write a script schedule that runs the processing in the background and the developers never have to worry about documenting what they've changed. So you can run it every, every few minutes. It just runs, picks up whatever changes are there and you keep moving forward. So a really big deal. Um, and I'm hoping the community really enjoys this. In conjunction with moving from DDR to XML, we have a, a workflow that's very different. So in version, um, versions before eight, version seven, six, five, et cetera, what we used to have is the FileMaker server and with Inspector hosted on it and um, you're open, opening your solution and you want to generate the DDR. So you would request the DDR for any open files. It would generate the, the DDR, it would save it locally. And then using the inspector, you would upload the DDR back to the server to get it processed. Very inefficient. Asking for it, getting it uh, generated locally. And then once it's all generated locally, then uploading it back to the server and having inspector process it. So download it, upload it, not able to be scripted, not server compatible, very slow. Save as XML, actually, an interesting caveat here, which I want to re restate and remind people, save as XML is actually even worse. If you have a file and it's hosted on a server, do not try and generate the save as XML locally. You're better off to script it and generate the XML on the server and um, you'll, you'll get a, a dramatic performance uh, gain. And that's the whole point of using the add-on that comes with inspectors. So version eight, what it does is it uses save as XML, which is different because it can be scripted. And so the other cool benefit is um, if you write a script schedule, as I mentioned before, you don't even have to have inspector open. It's just running on, it's just sitting on the server and the solution is there. The schedule runs every few minutes. It'll generate the XML, send it to inspector and process it. Um, if the solution is open and, and, a, and a user decides to, um, to, you know, they have the integration installed and they want to uh, document some, some changes they made, they can run it. And what it does is it generates the XML on a server and immediately tells Inspector to process it. So the Save as XML is server compatible. The Inspector Pro integration is an add-on that you can easily add to any of your files. And uh, a comment can be added along with, with when, you, um, when you fire it off to document what you've analyzed. So the other cool thing is Inspector doesn't even need to be open locally for all this to work. And uh, it's extremely, really fast on, on the server. So I encourage you to, to ha have it hosted and, and use the add-on um, or use a script schedule to, to trigger the, um, the processing. In moving over to save as XML, um, the, the XML output is, is different than what it used to be in the, in the DDR. And because of that, we, we had to rewrite a lot of the XSLs that Inspector uses to process the, the, um, the XML output. But the cool thing is that they added this higher level structure of catalogs that we never had before in DDR. And that's what makes 
that's what makes um this processing so much so much faster because the catalogs tell us there's changes uh, to look in, 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 in that section. So for example, uh, this is a base table catalog. It tells us the, there's modification count, there's a username and account name and a timestamp, and there's also a UUID associated with the catalog. But in this case, it tells us like there's three modifications to this uh, base table catalog. Now, if we ran this before and we had two modifications, next time we run it, and we, we parse the catalog section first, we'll see, oh, it looks like there was a change in this catalog. Let's go into the catalog and look at all the items in the catalog. And then we'll see um, all the base tables themselves and we'll see which one of the base tables actually had some changes to it. This is, this is the really cool way of being able to zero in and find what's changed. And um, unfortunately, modification counts are not everywhere so that's that's a downside to being able to use that consistently to understand what's changed but we found ways to work around that and so that's that's a big that's a big plus so that gives us the ability to zero in and find the things that have changed so next we have um uh layout parts that we never had before so in in the in the xml we now have the ability to document um, what the parts are uh, on a layout, and we and we also get the the side benefit of of being able to then tell the user that um, let's say you have a field that's used as a subsummary part, you also have a dependency or a reference to that field for that from that part. So um, that layout part depends on that field. So if you delete that field and it's referenced by the layout part, you're gonna you're going to introduce some problems. So layout parts are new. And, uh, and another thing that's new in the, in the save as XML is table occurrence notes. And um, yes, this is not a typo. They do show up as layout objects for some reason. Um, I don't know why, but anyway, that's just the way it is. That's the way it's output in the XML. And em emojis uh, come through just fine anywhere you use them, be it in uh, your scripts, uh, script step comments, um, you know, table occurrence notes, uh, anywhere you use them, they come through just fine. So these are some cool new things that they've added um, in the uh, in the XML. So uh, things that we've never had before. So we have more thorough oversight over the uh, the solution and what's in it.